SQL bulk copy class can be used to efficiently bulk load a SQL server table with data from another source. So for the purpose of that, I created a SQL connection here and I'm getting the connection string from the environment variable. So for using the SQL bulk copy class, we have to create a new instance of SQL bulk copy and it takes a connection object as the constructor parameter. So we can use and we can use the connection object. I'm using the using keyword because SQL bulk copy implements I disposable, so it needs to be disposed once it has been used. And then after that, there are a bunch of properties we can set for the bulk copy. So we can start with the first thing is the destination table name. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I am going to use this table called product which has ID, name, description, and type. And right now I truncated the table, so it does not have any data here. So first we are going to insert data into this table. So table name here is going to be product. And then after that, we can use few other properties. So the next thing we can use is the batch size. For us, we can use the batch size as 100. And the next property that we can use is the bulk copy timeout. This is the number of seconds for the operation to complete before it times out. Now providing timeout to SQL queries or SQL operation is very critical for a very resilient and healthy service. If the service takes too much time to respond, it is not a good experience. Now, this is not a service, this is just a console application, but for a better experience and keeping a good coding habit, bulk copy timeout should always be provided. And here, I'm going to set it up as 60 seconds. And apart from that, there are a few other things which we don't have to. One thing is column mapping. Now we can use it or we do not have to. If the column between source and destination has the same names, then we don't have to. Enable streaming is another property which enables or disables a bulk copy object to stream data from a iDeterator object. This is not needed for this example but this can be used if we're using a data reader. I'm going to show a data reader also for this example. And then this is an interesting property. This is the number of rows processed in the ongoing bulk copy operation. And SQL row copied, this event will happen after the copy is been processed. So this is also a nice event to have if you need to notify some other system after the copy is been done. And the method that we are going to use to write is the write to server async. Now write to server async method has multiple overload. So one overload is a DB data reader. The second one is an array of data row, which can be derived from a data table. And then a data table. And then I data reader. And then with the DB reader with cancellation token and for the all other overload cancellation token. So at a high level, we have two parameter, if you can think of, one is a data table and one is a data reader. So first we'll start with the data table and then we can go through the data reader. So for that purpose, what we are going to do is we're going to create a new data table. So we can say bar table is equal to new data table. And here for the data tables, we are going to create the columns. So it had four column ID, and then it has name, description, and finally the fourth and last is type. And then what we can do is we can create a for loop
and inside the for loop what we can do is we can do table dot rows dot add and here we can just add an object array and for the id we can give count plus one so that it starts from one and then for name we can say name plus count description description plus count and for the type type plus count so this will create an array of rows into the table and then finally here to the right async we can pass the table back and this is going to be an await and before we do this we have not opened the connection yet so we'll just open the connection dot open now i'm not explicitly closing the connection because i have a using here so once the code comes out of this block it will anyway close the connection or dispose of the object so now if i run this application this table here which is productable will be filled with 100 records and this is going to happen in a bulk insert so let's run this and once the code is executed if i go here now and execute I can see 100 record is executed. You can see there are 100 rows. Now, next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bulk copy, but use the second overload, which is DB reader. So here I have a product copy table. It has one to 100 records and description and name is a little bit different and type is constant as color. So we're going to insert this into this product table. So for that, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to first create a data reader here. So for that, I'll first start with command. It's a new SQL command. And for the query, I can say select star from product copy. Now one thing I want to emphasize is using select star is not a good practice. We should always use individual column. But here, just for simplicity and interest of time, I am putting star. Ideally, we should put all the columns and write it properly. And next, I can provide the connection. And then what I can do is I can provide the common type, which is text. And then finally open the connection and then I can do var reader equal to execute reader. Let's put an using here and using here. Now one thing is given that this connection will be associated to this reader, we cannot use the same connection here. So I'm going to create another connection object. Just copy this line, paste it here, and this is going to be connection one. And here for the connection of the bulk copy, I'm going to use connection one. And I'm going to open the connection one here. And in this place, instead of using table, I'm going to use the reader object SQL reader which is going to use this db reader overload for the write to async method now i'm going to save and run this application and now it is going to copy let me comment out this data table also as this is not needed anymore and i want to make sure it's not being referred anywhere so now i'm going to run this application and this will copy the other 100 record from the copy table into the main table, which is the product table. So let's execute. And now if I go and run this, I'm going to see 200 record here. You can see 200 and it starts with 100 and then another 100. Now, 
if we want to use the enable stream enable streaming which is essentially when we use i data reader object we can set it to true but this should not change anything fundamentally now i'm going to truncate this table just so that we can see the new data showing up with the stream it's easier and now i'll run the application it should behave exactly the same materially there should not be any difference to the execution method so as you can see it executed fine and if i execute it here i can see the 100 record copied from the other table now the enable stream the advantage here as it mentions in the documentation it's it is for optimizing memory usage using the i data reader streaming capability so that's the main difference and this can be useful if we are inserting really thousands of records from one table to another table using execute reader so that is all i wanted to cover for today's video if you like this video please give this video a thumbs up and if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel please subscribe to this channel and thanks so much for watching this video